So we're going to play the clip and we're going to talk about it. I have some questions. I want to see what you guys th thought about it. I know some of you guys listen to it. I'm just going to play it real quick. Curious on your guys' thoughts. Drop comments like on the video, you know, rather you hate it or not. I'm curious to what, see what you guys think. Oh, here we go. I'll just run my initial hypothesis by you. And so I, music is often regarded as a non-representational art form. I had a great journalist up to my house this week, Rex Murphy, and he said to me, this was a quote, and I don't remember where he derived it from, that all art aspires to the condition of music, I've heard which that, is a yeah. lovely phrase. And mm -hmm. so what when I started to think about music, I was thinking about it because it was essentially, it was an engaging experience that was immune from rational criticism. Mm -hmm. That really, so it had this intrinsic meaning that could not be subverted by criticism. And so it struck me as something extraordinarily powerful. And I started mm -hmm. to understand at that time that the world in, in a really deep sense is made out of nested patterns. And it, those patterns we perceive as objects and actions, but, but what they are are patterns in space and time. And that music is actually the most representative form of of art because it represents the harmonious interplay of patterns and then we pattern ourselves to the music and and find that what would you say existentially engaging in a very profound sure. sense so anyways sure. that's my music theory oh with a, without a doubt worth. and the easy version of that is a good beat because mm -hmm. a good beat implies in a primal sense a certain predictability and therefore a certain truth. I think you mm -hmm. can see in a lot of people a sense mm -hmm. that a good beat in the way you move your body to it equals a kind of truth because of the consistency. And look how it unites us. Yeah, and it brings people together. Yes, Classical is really music something. is harder because it's longer lined. And so a lot of teaching people to appreciate. So I just want to mention, like, I thought that was a really cool point. Like, I have some pause points here. Like, you know, we can't. Like, that's something I think we all realize is happening. Like, it's brought us all together. And look at us now. We're, yeah. like, talking about this right here and about music and stuff like that. So, and I love that there's people that don't agree in the chat. Like, that's yeah. part of what he's saying, too, is that brings us all together, even if we might not agree on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot more in common than we don't. Right. Yeah. It's its own language, you know, it's own, it's its own language that <clears throat> everybody can speak as without having to without having to learn an actual new language. You know, you listen to it and you already understand what you're hearing from a general standpoint. You know, obviously you could know more words, quote unquote, or more, uh, you know, have more ways to phrase things out, you know, musically the same way that other people would use, like they would use, these two guys would use much bigger words in sentences to say the same things that we would say in much smaller words, you know? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to music, like you have an understanding from the ear standpoint standpoint right off the bat that we don't have to learn we don't have to grow accustomed to and that's the part where i think it like it does blend all the cultures sort of together because it's just that sound yeah yeah, yeah exactly. that's what happened when yayoka visited and we were able to jam with each other even though we couldn't mm -hmm. speak it mm -hmm. was like a light bulb moment for me that the universal language you know to me what i thought i even told the guys like you know it'd be cool to bring this up because i think it also gets people into another side of music that maybe they want it you know brings them to this channel and says oh what is this japanese music that they're talking about why is it so great why is it so complex what is amazing you get more people checking out the music so you know um that was my idea i'm like yeah you could say this is some clickbait but it is to a certain extent, right? But it does have to do with what we're listening and the complexity of how Japanese music is and how structured and amazing that it is. And I think more people should hear it and why not figure out a way to draw people into that or get people curious about what's going on. Wait, why are these guys, like what is this small corner of the web talking about? What's so amazing about this Japanese music, you know? And that was the whole point of this. It wasn't to trigger anybody or piss anyone off, but it was just like yeah. to try to bring more people together on music in general. Yeah, that's what it's done. And when you listen to just what they're saying, uh, you know, I, I can't remember the other guy's name, but where he brings up a simple beat or whatever can can entertain you. And if and if you know, at, at different people like different things. Some people can listen to a same simple beat for years, and it that's fine. That's enough. But if you you crave, you know, more complex music, it can be it can last longer as uh, as an interest to you, which is what I'm finding with a lot of the bands we talk about. And it's not, you know, we're focused on Japanese bands here, but it's not just Japanese bands. I've discovered many, many bands. Exactly. And a lot of them, I, I can't imagine listening to them until I'm tired of listening to them, you know. 
yeah. but there's some music I've been listening to for decades that when I've discovered this new music, that's kind of, it's been pushed to the back a little bit, you know? So I guess there's a difference in, in songwriting when you get out of our comfort zone, the States that is, how do I want to say it almost common. Mm-hmm. And because there's, there's an intrinsic value in learning music in, in their youth in yeah. other countries, as opposed to here to where it's an option or it's something to do instead of study. You know, yeah. some people really love it. Some kids want to get out of it. So their learning music as opposed to just hearing music changes how you hear music. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that, not, that's probably, that's part of why I'm drawn to it. Cause I hear things I don't, I haven't heard before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah. Along with that, like that's what I thought was interesting about this conversation is as a musician, you know, we look at music a certain way because we play it, but yeah. hearing these two really intelligent people talk about music and how they view it got me to look at it in a different way too, which we'll probably get to later, but it's really interesting. Yeah. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep playing. And by the way, the other guy, John McWerther, like that's why like it's really interesting just having a conversation. So he actually teaches music or whatnot in the university that he's in. So. Yeah, and I'd just like to point out that also Jordan Peterson is was a guitar instructor. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yep. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. We'll wind up. Yeah, classical really music something. is harder because it's longer lined. And so a lot of teaching people to appreciate classical music is to teach them how to hear it as something other than mm-hmm. just this endless desultory string of whatever. There's pattern in it, too. And you don't really yes. appreciate it unless you just learn how to breathe and take in the longer pattern. Yeah. yeah so when you when you listen to a, a great classical piece, say a, a Bach concerto or something like that, mm-hmm. how do you have to listen to it multiple times before you understand it? Definitely. Yes. yes. Seven, okay. Seven. So. My rule is you you don't really know it until you've heard it about seven times. If it's challenging music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about that because like that was another thing he brought up and you guys heard me mention it in multiple reactions. There's some songs that I just don't get out the gate and I have to listen to it again and I don't some give bang. up on it. And it's just things like that. That's what I meant. I felt like he said it better than the way I would say it. I was just like, that's exactly what I say. I got to listen to it again. And some people will argue with me, of course, and say, well, you're forcing yourself to like it. No, it's it's because I'm aware that it's good. I just not, I don't know why it's good yet. You know what I'm saying? Black hole. <laughs> but, some song, a few listens. But, but some songs are just not good, of course. <laughs> There's definitely those songs that are just not good. Um, and But those I feel like I recognize pretty fast when I'm like, okay, this isn't good. But there's some songs where I'm like, this is good, but I don't like it. Why? Uh, like, that's just me. I like to analyze, hyper analyze that kind of stuff. And normally the way I get around it is I learn the song or I try to figure it out, you know, or uh, how to play it and stuff. And then normally, if you guys ever notice when you learn a song that you're not a fan of, like uh, I've done this with bands, they'll be like, hey, I need you to learn this cover and this cover. And I'm like, oh, I really don't want to learn that cover. And then you learn it you're like, oh, this is pretty badass. <laughs> Have yeah, you guys had that happen to you? Mine What's the song you guys done that with? That you're like, oh, fuck, I got to learn this. And then you learn it and you're like, oh, my God, this is actually pretty amazing. Oh, man. You say I, I, I kind of took it a different way, but uh, Nirvana songs. I mean, I like the songs anyway, but I didn't like I liked it as a song as a whole as opposed to playing guitar. I, I learn it. And uh, the way the way Kurt wrote was such a he didn't give a fuck about traditional songwriting. So he would just play whatever he wanted to play. So you get thrown into these different chords that usually aren't put together. So Nirvana is a great you know. example. Cause when I learned drums on Nirvana songs, I understood how complex melodies actually were. Oh, I knew yeah. I oh, liked really? Nirvana. I knew I liked Nirvana, but it took drum playing, which is random. It wasn't even the guitar. And I started hearing like the lines and how he like progressed the chords. I'm like, wow, that's actually pretty genius. Nobody writes like that. They're <laughs> hard to cover and get right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. For me, it was uh, playing funk music. I was in a band where it was mostly, like, funk, soul music, and learning, like, that's the way I like it, you know? That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, when you <laughs> yeah. realize how rhythmic the guitar is in that song, which I would never hear when it's on the radio, but when I had to learn it, I was like, holy crap, this is some really amazing guitar playing because it's – so essential to the rhythmic balance of the song. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Champ? Do you have anything? Uh, Roundabout by Yes was a song that I've heard just a bajillion times. I think yeah. all of us have probably heard it a bajillion times. Um, and honestly, just going through the intro was 
sounded pretty simple to me, you know, but, 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 but it's a very classical sound in the beginning. Uh, and it wasn't until I realized that he was playing with uh, his fingers and plucking multiple strings at the same time to create oh, the wow. sounds that he was making that I was just like, whoa, this is way beyond my capabilities. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, there's some even band made songs, obviously love to begin with. And then once I learned it, it was, it was almost the same thing to where she, where Konami's, uh, her phrasing is very different for a lot of things. It was the one I was looking at the other it's day. It's pretty unorthodox the way that she does her phrasing too. Like yeah. when I was learning uh, warning, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a random plucking of clean chords, like right before that chorus starts. Uh, when I was learning it, like she literally turns off the pedal and does these do, 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 do. like she plucks, she finger plucks them real quick. Yeah. And then she puts back on the distortion or whatever. But anyways, I'm not going to try. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, uh, I like how your first. Go ahead. Clang <laughs> is a really cool. That's a really cool fucking song to learn. It's so weird. I just I sat down and made a video of uh, uh, Konami's uh, Instagram lessons that she did. Uh, and music put a compilation together. Somebody shared it with me. So I was going through it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to learn some of this shit. And, I, and that was it's a it's a weird thing to play. It's very cool. But that's kind of. Her phrasing is very, is very unique. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, f- I find Konami in general to be sort of like that all the time. It, just like uh, it's a little off the beaten pattern. Off the is that the off the beaten path? path. Off the yeah. beaten path. <laughs> beaten yeah, <something>. like uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> she, she's constantly doing things where I'm going, oh hey, I haven't heard that before, and and it might not even be the most. Uh, you know, uh, difficult or it, it might, some parts might even sound simple, but it's the way that it's written and, and the, the, the bends and the slides that she uses that I think give it more personality and charisma in the guitar itself. Hmm. Yeah, the articulation. For more Gaijin goodies like you just saw, be sure to subscribe to the Gaijin Guys podcast and turn on all notifications to be part of the live stream every Sunday. You can also find us wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, etc. You can find even more exclusive content and reactions on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Gaijin Guys. I'll see you there. Adios.